Okay, we're going to talk about the kinematic equations, which are sometimes known as the motion equations. The word kinematic basically means motion. Um, some people say that there are four, and I will say that there are five. And so we will sometimes call these the fab five equations. The first equation you can basically get from a position versus time graph. So here's position versus time. If I have two points on the graph, and this gives me an idea of how my position is going to change with time. Well, I can see that this has an equation that follows the form of y equals mx plus b. And if I look at what my y and my x axis are, they're actually going to be position, which I'll use x, and then time. Now, the slope of this is going to be your rise over your run. So your rise is a change in x. Your run is a change in time. And so our slope, delta x over delta t, is something that we call the average velocity. So we put a bar over it. So our slope isn't m, but it's average velocity. Then our initial position at the beginning is x naught. We call that x naught. It's like saying x when time is 0. So x of 0, or we call that x sub 0, x naught. Uh, this equation is really useful. You can only use this if there is constant velocity. So only if constant velocity. Okay, the next motion equation comes from looking at a velocity versus time graph. If you make a velocity versus time graph, and let's say that you have a similar type of line, in this situation, you're going to have some initial velocity here, uh, we can actually call that v naught because, again, it's like saying velocity when time is 0, and we call that v sub 0, or v naught. Um, and then the velocity increases, so that means there's a rate to the change, um, and we can find that by doing the rise, which is change of velocity over the run, change of time. So the rise, change of velocity over the run, change in time, we call that acceleration. Uh, and we put a bar over it to represent that it's an average acceleration. The equation that we get from this of y equals mx plus b, so I use the form of a line and I realize that I don't have a y and an x axis, but a v and a t. So I have velocity equals, my slope is average acceleration, my x axis is time, and my intercept is just my first velocity, so my v naught, my initial velocity. And this makes the Next, really important, helpful motion equation. And this can only be used if there is a uniformly accelerated motion or a constant acceleration. So we'll call that UAM. We use UAM because it is a phrase that Galileo coined in his book, Two New Sciences, when he decided that accelerated motion was worth studying because things that fall, fall with a uniform or a constant acceleration. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the area of the velocity versus time graph. The area of a velocity versus time graph is really important. It's going to show us something in meters per second times seconds. So if I use, uh, for example, one box, the base is going to be some unit of time, and the height is going to be some unit of velocity. So if I just write that out, uh, the base is seconds, and then the uh, height as velocity, so we'll do that in meters per second. This should be a good, uh, a good giveaway that the seconds cancel out, and what the area tells me is something about the meters, um, which is the distance. The first people that um, showed this to us were in the 1300s. Um, they're known as the Oxford Calculators, or the Merton School. This is sometimes uh, referred to as Nicole Oresma's first contribution to mathematics. It's a really important thing. So let's see how I can use the area of a velocity versus time graph to come up with more equations, remembering that the area tells me distance. Okay, so let's set up the same curve or the same line. Okay, so essentially what I have here is two shapes. I have a rectangle that looks like that. That's a great rectangle. And then a triangle. So let's start by finding what the area of the rectangle is. The area of the rectangle is, and let's make these velocity versus time, uh, is going to be the base times the height. Now, 
because the base here, this is telling me that my initial time is zero, t not equals zero, that's pretty obvious. Um, and then here what I have is a velocity of zero right here. Um, I can ignore the change. I don't have to write delta t for the base and delta v for the height. But all I have to do is write um, t for the base. Okay, so that's time. And then the highest velocity that I reach for this rectangle is the initial velocity, which we called v naught. So really this rectangle is t times v naught, but just to make it pretty, we're going to write it v naught t. Okay, so the area of this rectangle here is v naught times time. Okay, so that's a speed times a time, or a velocity times a time, so it will give us a distance. Now let's take a look at the triangle. The triangle section is going to be half of its base times its height. So again, because the initial time is zero here at the base, I don't need to say delta t, I just need to say one half of t, that's the base. But the height for the section of triangle here is not going to be uh, v naught or v. It has to be the difference between whatever this point is, which let's just call it v, because it could go on indefinitely, and so that's our function. Uh, and what I have here is the change from v naught, the initial velocity, to v. Or we can appropriately call that delta v, which is always just v minus v naught. So that's my height, delta v, or v minus v naught. Okay, great. And let's rearrange that just so that it's in a little bit more usable form. One half v minus v naught times t. Okay, so that's this area of the triangle. One half v minus v naught times t. And that will also tell me some distance. Or uh, in our case, we're going to call this displacement because we're interested in either positive or negative, even though most of this area is positive because it's above the, uh, the x-axis is zero. So what we're going to do is write this as an equation. Delta x equals, and then I add these two terms together. v naught t plus 1 half v minus v naught t. So from this relationship, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get two motion equations. So the first thing that I'm going to do is see if there's any sort of simplification that I can do to this equation without substituting anything. Um, which I can. If I write v naught t as 2 over 2 v naught t, so that's still 1, v naught t, I haven't done anything illegal in math. And then for this next term, the 1 half v minus v naught t, if I actually um, make that a little bit bigger, so plus, sorry, expand it, 1 half v t minus 1 half v naught t, so all I've done is just distributed the 1 half and then broken apart the term, then you'll notice that this 1 half v naught t actually cancels 1 of the 2 over 2 v naught t. So this leaves me with 1 half v naught t plus 1 half v t. And this I can clearly combine into 1 half v naught plus v, or you can do v plus v naught, it doesn't matter times t. So this is our next motion equation. This is a very useful motion equation. Um, you actually can use this if there is uniformly accelerated motion or if there's constant velocity. It's kind of a stupid equation to use if you have constant velocity because basically what it is telling you is um, v plus v naught, so let's say your velocity is constant and it's 5, then 1 half v plus v naught is telling you that half of 5 plus 5, or, or half of 10, is 5. So this whole thing kind of becomes irrelevant. But just know that you can always use this equation regardless of if it's constant velocity or accelerated motion. Okay, so now let's take this exact same equation that we had, but let's go back and let's come up with a different equation from it. Okay, so this time what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the fact that this term right here, v minus v naught, is actually delta v. Okay, so really this is v naught t plus one half delta v times time. 
and I'm going to remember from my uh, definition of average acceleration that it is delta V over delta T. Um, but in this case, remember that our initial time, if I write delta T, our initial time is actually zero right here. So I don't need to write delta T because I'm going to get T minus T naught, which is the same thing as saying T minus zero. So really, in this case, for our graph, delta T, that was weird, I am sick, delta T is just T. So I can get rid of delta T and call it T. Okay, then to get delta V by itself, I just multiply both sides by T. And I get delta V equals A times T. And I can plug that in here. So now I'm doing a substitution. And what I get is V naught T plus one half A T times T. Or I can just call that T squared. And this is our most useful motion equation. The displacement is equal to the initial velocity times time, so this section here. And then what I've done is rearranged this triangle, this top part of the velocity versus time graph, into one half the acceleration times time squared. Uh, so this is a really, really helpful motion equation. You should write it down and memorize it. And I can also take delta x and write it as x minus x naught. So I get x minus x naught equals all of this stuff. And do something fun with it. I can add x naught to both sides. So if I add x naught to both sides, that gets rid of x naught on the left. And I'm just left with x equals v naught t plus 1 half at squared plus x naught. And I can rearrange that so that it's in a more familiar form. So that it looks like this. It's not plus v naught t plus 1 half. Oh, sorry. I'm going to write it a different way. 1 half a t squared plus v naught t plus x naught. Okay, so this is sometimes a bit more easier to use because what this tells me is not the displacement, but the final position. And this gives me a graphable line. It'll be uh, on a position versus time graph, a curved quadratic line. And I know that it's a quadratic line because this really is of the form y equals ax squared, where a is one half of the acceleration, plus bx, where the initial velocity is b, plus c, where my uh, initial position would be my c. So this would actually give me an equation that describes a curve on a position versus time graph, and so you should know it. Okay, so our last motion equation that we're going to take a look at um, is uh, pretty simple. It comes up with, or it comes down to any kind of problem where you don't have time. So I call this the ain't got no time equation. It's really simple. We're going to start with the easiest motion equation for displacement. So delta x equals 1 half of v plus v naught times t. And then what I'm going to do is see if I can get rid of time by substituting something in. And if I'm uh, careful or if I'm clever, what I can do is I can take my equation for acceleration, which is A equals delta V over delta T. But remember for our graph that we were looking at, um, delta T is T minus T naught. So T naught is really just zero. So delta T for us is just really T because that's going to be zero. So delta V over T, not uh, delta T, if you, if you care. And then what I'm going to do is rearrange this a little bit. Um, all I'm going to do is solve for time. So multiply both sides by t, divide both sides by a. And what I get is t equals delta v, which let's just go ahead and write that as v minus v naught, delta v, all over the acceleration. Okay, so let's plug that in for time. Now what we get is half of v plus v naught times not t, but v minus v naught all over a. Um, and I can actually put all of this 
over a, which I will do in a second. Because really what it's like doing is instead of saying one half of v plus v naught times v minus v naught over a, I'm, I'm doing the 2 and the a both on the bottom. So you can actually just write this over 2a. I don't have to write that 1 because multiplying it by 1 is useless. Okay, so let's clean this equation up. I've got delta x on the left. I can get the 2a on the right pretty easily. Multiply both sides by 2a. And you get this relationship of, I'll write the v's on the left, v plus v naught times v minus v naught equals, sorry, 2a delta x. Okay, so now what you should recognize is that on the left, v plus v naught times v minus v naught is something that we call the difference of squares, um, where if I had x squared minus y squared, it's actually going to be x plus y times x minus y, the difference of squares. So that's exactly what I have here. You can FOIL it, um, first inner, what is it, first outer, inner, last, whatever. And well, you'll get the same thing. You'll get v squared minus v naught squared on the left equals 2a delta x. So one last simplification I'm going to make is I'm going to add v naught to both sides. So I get v squared equals 2a delta x plus v naught squared. Um, and this becomes our next most useful motion equation. This is the equation that you use if you don't know anything about time and you would like to skip a step and not find the time. Um, so you've got the final velocity squared equals twice the average acceleration times the displacement plus the initial velocity squared. Um, this corresponds to a linear relationship between velocity squared and displacement, which is kind of a weird relationship, but basically your velocity squared is related to how far you go or the change of your position. Um, there's not much here that we work with this graph, so this equation is all you need. Congratulations, you've done such a great job. I am so excited for you to use these equations.